Outlander panel. Yeah. Guys, I gotta say, I had so much fun preparing for this panel. I, you guys are such a passionate group, reading all your tweets, reading the questions you guys wanted to ask. And I just gotta say, I'm so impressed with the community you guys have built around this show, Outlander. It is awesome. So what do you guys say we put it into this drought, at least for the next hour, yeah? Please welcome the show stars, Katrina Bowles! Come on out, Katrina! Hello! You know, when we're in Scotland, usually we drink whiskey, but we're in Seattle, so I guess it's just coffee. You know, whiskey is, whiskey is acceptable here. And, and by the way, thanks for bringing the Scottish weather. Thank uh, you, guys. Pleasure, You're welcome. Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure that is actually uh, coffee. It does smell a little bit suspect. Irish hey. coffee. <laughs> so, uh, is, this, is this your first appearance outside of San Diego Comic-Con in the States? Uh, yeah, it's mine. My first convention. Are, are you guys ready to uh, kind of burst their con cherry here in Seattle? Oh. I am. Well, as I mentioned, when I was preparing for this panel, there were a lot of suggestions for questions, and y'all also had a lot of suggestions for questions you did not want to hear or to be asked. So look up here. Here's a bingo card that was uh, tweeted to me several times. <laughs> <laughs> Digest that information. If you, so plan on, if you plan on going up to a mic for Q&A, because we are going to have a big Q&A here, take a look. These, these are what we don't need to ask, okay, guys? <laughs> take a picture of that. And, uh, what's well, under your kilt? That's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what, what's under the kilt? We I don't, don't know. I mean, I, I, I was drinking this beer last night called a kilt lifter, and... Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't recommend it. It's... Uh, yeah, it can lead you astray. You don't recommend it, but yeah. other, other people do recommend it, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Maybe I didn't drink enough, that's the problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah, ah, that's yeah. good. So as we prepare for the Q&A, and you guys can feel free to uh, line up at the mics. We're going to have two sets of mics. Um, this fandom, obviously, is passionate, dedicated. Uh, Very this, quiet. Yeah. That's not a word I would use to describe these guys. 26 years in the making, eight novels. As actors, when you guys first you know, were approached and got the roles, how do you, where do you even begin with creating these characters for the screen? Wow, <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, we, we're just saying just now, we, you know, we've, we're on our third year, our third season of shooting, and it, uh, so thank you. And um, yeah, it just feels like such a long, a long time ago. I think we both aged Katrina more than me and uh, hey. <laughs> and, uh but it was you know obviously the books Diana who we all love and admire she yes absolutely she um she wrote these, these great books and I think that's exactly where you need to start and uh it's been a it's been a really amazing process an amazing journey um and uh here we are like we're in our third season and it's three and a half years three later. and a half years later we're on Voyager. It sort of feels rather uh, appropriate that this been, has been this kind of epic journey. And Katrina, where did you start with Claire? Where did you, you know? Well, I had a, a very short window of time um, between when I got cast and when I was in Scotland. So um, <laughs> I think I started with Panic, okay. first of all. Um, but I'd read, I'd read the first book before I had tested with Sam. So I, I knew what that was. And, um, and I, I really started with, um, I, I found all these first-hand accounts of nurses that um, were in World War II. So I just started reading all about them and their experiences because that's where Claire had just come from. So um, that, that was where I started, yeah. Yeah, and how much of a responsibility in the beginning, and obviously that's carried through season two, season three, but do you, do you feel and how does it weigh on you to service the fans of the books and, and the written word? 
Well, as we know, these, <laughs> well, these fans are, you know, they're never, uh, they're never shy to, uh, to make their opinions known. They have known. no expectations. Yeah. yeah. I mean... <laughs> So, um, you know, we, we were both aware of these characters being, you know, you know, 20 years ago, Diana wrote these books, and so there was a great anticipation. Um, and we just wanted to do them a service, didn't we? But I also think, you know, we were in such a bubble in Scotland when we first started season one. You know, we didn't re we weren't really aware of the magnitude <laughs> of the fan base. Um, and I think that that served us really well, because I think in that first season, it was so important for us to just do, do it our way and follow the path the way that the book and the scripts had laid out. And, you know, and it was then when we sort of took our head out of that bubble and sort of looked around after season one, we were like, oh my God, <laughs> you know. What are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the logistical side of all this is the filming process, which you guys have a very long shooting schedule and extensive process. Look um, how we've aged. Do you want to talk a little bit about? Yes, <laughs> yes. We've, uh, we do obviously about 10 months, 11 months a year. Um, and uh, obviously, you know, season three is taking longer than we thought, anticipated. Um, sorry about that. Sorry. It's, it's not, if Sam learned his lines, you know, then we'd be That's yeah. true. <laughs> but, um, you know, we obviously, you know, the production is so vast and it takes time. We're off to South Africa. Yes. Uh, actually, tomorrow uh, we leave and, um, uh, yeah, so it's such a vast production, you know, and each day it just takes uh, the logistics of, of getting, you know, you know, 50 Highlanders up onto the mountains with horses and stuff. It, it just takes time. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, obviously, there is this, you know, this huge gap between season two and season three that everybody is anticipating. But on the other hand, it's like you do you do respect the fact that Stars is like, okay, we need to do it correctly. That's a huge book. We have to service the, you know, the full story. So, you know, it's kind of the give and take there, I guess, with the fandom. I mean, we won't finish shooting, <laughs> sorry, we won't finish shooting till June. So, you know, we need to also have the end of the show <laughs> filmed before we can start airing the beginning. So, I've um, seen, I mean, we've seen, uh, you know, not to talk too much about season three because we're not allowed to. Um, <laughs> But uh, we, uh, we have seen bits, I've seen some stuff, and I'm really excited. I think each season is, is gets stronger and is, is, has a different take, and this one uh, in particular feels you know, strong, and I think the fans are gonna love it. Well, I hope. I think so too, and I, I don't think it's a real secret that you know, season three you guys spend a lot of time apart, and then you know, are finding each other again. I mean, you know, so. Somebody went off and became a printer. I <laughs> <laughs> You're really not going to yep. say anything about season three, are you? <laughs> All right. Someone went off and got remarried. No, well, no, no, not remarried. Oh, I love you, but... No. Well, you know, Entertainment Weekly did release that photo of you right after you gave birth. You yes, know, Brianna. Um, and with Brianna and Frank in the photo. And it's interesting because I'm curious, your character obviously knows that Frank is, you know, not the father, but is making a choice. It seems just by that picture that, that she has to go in a certain direction because she thinks you're dead, sorry. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I you know, <laughs> that is the it's thing. A um, you know, Claire believes Jamie has died. So there aren't really any options. So I think she does what any mother would do and that is try and survive and I, that's part of the reason I love Claire so much because no matter what situation she's in she's a survivor she's adaptable <laughs> being a survivor is a good thing so do you guys have questions yes come on you guys want to get no okay no, oh, well. you have to go to the mic we'll go, get killed go to the mics then there's two sets of mics um, they're gonna be in this aisle and in this aisle uh, and while you guys line up, so season three, we will talk, we see Claire and Frank, we see Claire and Brianna, we see a little more of like her professional history as a doctor in the medical profession. I mean, what can you, you know, speak to that was different for you about filming that season than, than the prior two? Um, well, I think it's, you know, a lot of it is sort of a continuation of the story that we were telling in 213, you know, um, I think that the really great challenge about this season and the end of last season for me was telling the story of a woman 
who's lived 20 years and yet we're only seeing these little vignettes. So it's, you know, that's a really interesting acting challenge. Um, you know, obviously I, I, I sort of missed my partner in crime, but uh, you know, it's not that long until, <laughs> you until he was driving me nuts again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to have your own space, your own trailer. Um, <laughs> not that we share trailers, so that would be um, weird. Don't let him throw you off. Oh, God. <laughs> Go See what I have read to that put on Tumblr, I reckon, now. Here we'll be like. um, but, yeah, it's, you know, I think it's, um, it's interesting to see. And, you know, it's not that we just tell Claire's story. Believe me, it's, it's more Jamie's story in the beginning. <laughs> um, so you see how, how these two people have to live without each other. And that's, I think, a really important part of, of who they become later on. So... Well, I'm very excited, very excited for September. Let's take our first question over here. Hi. Um, Melody, and I'm from um, Bonnie Lake. Hi, Melody. Hi. Nice to meet you, Sam, by the way. Good to meet <laughs> you, too. Um, when are you guys uh, going to start, start, how much of a break do you guys get between this season and starting the film for next season? Ooh. How much of a a break between season three and four? Yeah. Okay. A Probably few months. Sometime. <laughs> between. We're not 100% we, we, we got sure. sent some answers uh, for difficult <laughs> questions like that. <laughs> we could read them out, but. Um, but I uh, think we'd get in trouble. We would get in trouble and <laughs> might not have a season four if we did so. Um, but there will be some time in between seasons. Um, but I do know that they've already started uh, scouting and looking at stuff. So um, it's. It, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's all you're going to get on that, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, hi. How are you? Hi, I'm Megan. I live on the Kitsap Peninsula, which is a Hey, hey. Megan. Um, so I grew up kind of on the books, and it's influenced me a little bit as a healthcare professional. I'm a physical therapist now. And I just wondered, especially Claire, or um, Katrina. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll take as, that. As you've researched the character and researched how she has to go back in time and kind of recoup her knowledge as a nurse with traditional healing methods, if there's anything that's, that you've come away with that and influenced in your own health and wellness and any changes that you've made in your own life based on some of that health history. That's super interesting. Great question. Um, you know, I, one of the great things about this was in season one, I got to spend a good bit of time with a herbalist and um, a naturopath. And we sort of went through different, um, I don't know, like slippery elm bark and, you know, chamomile tea and candela and all of these things. And I do, I, I, I now use those things. Um, and, and you always give me drugs. <laughs> She's always drugs, feeding me, darling, like, not take, take one of these and. I am, I am the like, I'm all about my vitamins and <laughs> no. But when you're when you're shooting for ten months and you're shooting fourteen hour days, you can't afford to be sick. I mean I don't think either of us have ever had a sick day. You just don't get that luxury. Um, and Sam somehow always gets sick. <laughs> so I'm the one with the vitamin C and the B twelve and the vitamin D and the you know so Fire. I'm trying to keep him healthy. But yeah, so I, it's a lot to do. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I'm keeping him healthy for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, life imitates art, imitates life, right? Thank you for that question. Thank you. Thank you. Sam, what's the hardest thing you've had to learn for your character? Oh, wow. Um, His lines. My, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's probably right. Um, yeah, it's uh, no. Obviously, you know, season one was there was the, the horse riding and the, and the Gaelic, which obviously uh, is a great part of, of season one, and I really enjoyed season two. The French was a little bit trying. Um, Pourquoi? Uh, oui, allez, <laughs> on y va, and such like. Yes. So um, there's always a challenge, and, and the, the thing with our show is that every episode is just so different and. So there's always, a, uh, you know, something new to learn, whether it's a new fight scene or, um, you know, a bit of choreography or, um, you know, researching into, you know, into the history of the time. So um, it really is, you know, a challenging show and uh, we're very lucky to be part of it. Well, and I think the reason it comes across so well is you guys do such a great job with those 
that research and developing, you know, the times and everything. So, yes, hi. Hi, my name's Cassie from Dallas, Texas. Hello. Hey, hey Cassie. Hello. Um, just a fun question. So, Comic Cons are all about geeking out, and as you may have experienced, um, Outlander fans are a little crazy. And by crazy, I mean absolutely nuts. Um, so, help us feel better about our craziness. Is there anybody that you would totally geek out over if you ever had the chance to meet? I, uh, I, I'm actually going to wear a t shirt tomorrow. I've got my Stranger Things t shirt. I'm going to wear that tomorrow. Um, Millie Bobby Brown, she's, is, I, I want to meet her. And actually, Jeremy Renner. So it's a bit embarrassing. I, I was a bit of a fanboy. Uh, so we were at the bar at uh, this Oscar party, and uh, he came in between us, and there was like a really awkward moment where he like leant past me to get his drink. And I'm, that's just Jeremy Renner. <laughs> do I say something? Do I not say something? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> You're really good in Arrival. <laughs> and he just, he just looked at me and went, thank you, brother, and ran away. Um, Sam came back so dejected. So, dejected. so uh, I hope I don't bump into him now, or he doesn't recognize me. <laughs> Who knew he's, like, southern? I mean, that accent, I'm sure he's putting that on. Uh, I, I had a total geek out moment last year. This was before the controversy of last week, but I, I met Faye Dunaway and I was just like, oh my God, can I take my picture with you? And she let me, which was kind of surprising because I was like freaky, but. That's a great question, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Hi Sam, hi Katrina, welcome to Seattle. Hi. Thank you for having us. My name's Nicole and I live in Puyallup, Washington, which when you climb the mountain, Sam, you'll probably drive through Puyallup to get to Mount Rainier. Um, but mine's more of a, this is for Sam. Um, I'm a peaker and I have been for Yes, months. thank you. Pretty much from the beginning. Wow, it's loads. And because of your program, for the first time in my life, I love who I am and I think I'm beautiful. Oh. I'm 43 years old and I've never Thank you life. so much. Thank you so I much. I love you forever, no matter oh. what, because uh, you, gave, you gave me my self-worth. So thank you for that. You helped thank me you. find Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. We'll go have that. a hug later. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's really special. Thank you. And, and actually, thank you to, to everyone that has uh, joined my Peak Challenge. It's um, really, thank you. It's really taken off, and we, uh, we've, we've got thousands of you now, over 8,000 peakers, and uh, we just transferred half a million dollars to Bloodwise, this charity we're working for, so it's, it's incredible. So thank you. Yes, hi. Hi, I'm Erin. I'm also from Texas. Um, I'm going to Scotland and Ireland this summer. What is a must-see when I get over there in your favorite places to eat in Glasgow or Dublin? Well, you don't want to go to Ireland. Spend all your time in Scotland. Hey! It's a poor relative of Scotland. It's dark. Wow. Depressing. Terrible, <coughs> terrible beer. I was, in an, I was in an Irish bar last night, I promise. It's okay. It's just, uh... Irish people are like elephants. We don't forget. <laughs> What's the one place? What, what should you see? What's the one place in, in okay, um, Ireland and Scotland? Why don't I do Scotland and you do? That's a <laughs> That's great good. idea. Okay. Okay. I would Scotland. say go to Loch Rannoch in Scotland. Um, it's where we film all the stones scenes, and it's the most beautiful place um, I've been, I think. Has anyone been? Wow. Wow. Mm. Don't go there. There's loads of crazy fans. <laughs> It is beautiful there, isn't it? Yeah. It's amazing. And you can climb Shahalian while you're there. You can. It's uh, great. Uh, your, it could be your first Munro. Um, actually, I climbed that on my birthday. I think I've probably mentioned this before, but um, I climbed up there on my birthday when we were shooting there. I had the day off. No, no, no. While we were shooting. They were shooting. I had the day <laughs> off. It was great. And uh, I was rather hungover, but I climbed up and 
Uh, it was uh, very misty and you couldn't see much and then slowly the clouds parted and I could see right down the bottom there was this film crew around the, the stones. It was kind of a special moment. Um, Ireland. Well, uh, I would say Dublin is an amazing city. Um, yeah. If you go north, the uh, Giant's Causeway is incredible. Yes. Uh, it's uh, a really fun place. And then you could go to Bushmills Distillery. Uh, you could go to Guinness. Um, it doesn't all revolve around alcohol, but uh, it does sometimes for me. Um, it's a great country. Thank you. And have a great trip. <laughs> Hi. My name is Mackenzie, I'm from Maine, um, and I've been trying to be heart healthy, so do you have any porridge secrets, or like, how do you take it? How do you have Ooh. your porridge in the morning? I'm actually quite partial to the overnight oats. Oh. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. just a little almond milk or coconut milk and let them sit overnight, add in a little bit of fruit or chia seeds, mm. you know. I'm a, I'm a big fan of almond butter, so plenty of that on top. Maybe a bit of uh, protein in there, like a protein powder, but I'd go for plant-based ones. You can get like chocolate porridge or, or banana or strawberry if you're so inclined. I don't, I wouldn't take food advice from Sam. Yeah. <laughs> and then ketchup, a bit of ketchup. He still eats like a 12 year old. I, we had a steak last night and I- He ordered ketchup with his steak What's last wrong night. with that? <laughs> oh boy. I mean, What's we're, wrong we're, with we're dealing people? with a teenager here, you there's, know? There's work to be done. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi. I I'm Mary Beth from Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome. Hi. Hey. Um, I have a, a question, actually. Um, just talking to fans and friends today, um, the separation of Sam versus Jamie and Claire versus Kat. Um, how much of the, of the role that you play do you actually put into it? And the reason I'm asking that, because the very last time we saw the two of you, you were at Craig Madoon. And that was an absolutely beautiful scene where you waltzed back to the stone. Well, I'm sorry, Sam, is, is someone <laughs> calling you? <laughs> My mom. Remember okay. when I said about a teenager? So sorry. I was wondering if, um, if you do put a lot of yourself, your own personal self into your role, and if you do, could you share with us that beautiful waltz back to the stone? Should we do it? <laughs> well, I think that, you know, obviously a lot of you are, you were cast because a lot of your, your personality, you know, not necessarily aligned exactly with the character, but you were able to, you know. Well, no, I, I think when, when the producers and, and the writers were casting these roles, obviously they want somebody who has the essence that they see in, in the character, and um, I think that they felt that we both had that. You know, I think as, a, as an actor, you're, in some ways, you're a channel for the characters that you play, and you sort of want to hold a space for them that they can, you know, have their emotions and their feelings and all of those things, but it's all through your own filter. So, you know, I, I can only feel the, the experiences that I've gone through when I'm reading something, my empathy has to come from some sort of my experience. So um, in that way, yes, you do end up putting a lot of, a lot of yourself into the role, but, um, but I also think it's very important to be able to keep certain things separate. You know, it is that kind of dance that you have to do as an actor. Um, but you know, also, I had never played a character for this long before, and I'd never lived with a character for this long before, and I think that as much as there's m me and Claire, I think that she's inspired me a lot and given me so much in my life, and, and it's been an amazing experience because of that as well. Absolutely. That's a great answer. And that's something you often hear from, like, for example, the, the original series, Star Trek, the original series actors. They played these characters for so long that they, you know, what's the difference between Leonard Nimoy and Spock? They each feed into each other. So, it's, it, you know, with the filming schedule, I see that. Thank you. That's a great question. Thank, Thank you. Hi. Hi. I'm Sheila from Seattle. Hi, Hi Sheila. Sheila. Sam and Kate, you have both done such an amazing job of becoming the characters that all of these fans found in the books originally that really nobody can take over these roles for you, and now you have two or three years, maybe four, maybe five, ahead of you, 
in the roles, which is great news for us, but I'm wondering what your level of frustration is in not having the time to pursue other roles now that you really have, I'm sure, a lot of opportunities to do so. That's a great question. Um, yes, it is. I mean, you know, <clears throat> I think, uh, as we say, this job is, is all consuming, and so um, even when we do get time off, you kind of want to to relax or, or, or not think about working or um, you know just have some downtime. Um, but I know that we're both actively seeking stuff. I, uh, I do have a project that um, hopefully will work in the break between this season and next season, uh, which I'm very excited about. But um, you know, doing something can be, can be restful as well. It can be refreshing. Um, so I think it would be good for, for me to do. But th this job is so fun, so all consuming. Um, that, yeah, maybe I just want to go and lie on a beach somewhere. <laughs> well, I think it, it, it's that thing of, you know, we're, we're s you don't get opportunities like this very often. You don't get a great show and great characters like this very often. And I think we're both very aware and very conscious of how bloody lucky we are. Um, and so you want to be able to see that to as far as it will go. And, and, and I think we're both very excited about doing that. But as an actor, you want to also tell many stories. Um, so it is important to also try and do something else, but that's only, it's kind of like the cherry on top of the icing, on top of the cake, you know, if we get to do anything else. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a balancing act, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. And we have a question from Twitter. This is from Elise on Twitter. And uh, Sam, it's for you. Jamie was without Claire for 20 years. How did you approach the character and how he changed without her. This is j from Elise on Twitter. Um, I mean, yes, okay, I'm gonna skirt around spoilers and things, naughty things I'm not allowed to say. Um, so uh, obviously, you know, if people have read the book uh, Voyager, um, know that uh, it picks up where we left off and I think we're gonna follow that pretty closely in, in the show. Um, so we do get to see Jamie's journey without Claire, and um, God, am I allowed to say this much? Well, how did you approach it? How did I approach it? Well, it's, he, he basically is, he's, yes. <laughs> oh, God. He was if obviously no, If lost. I don't go back to work next week, you know why. <laughs> um, well, basically, Jamie's uh, not himself. Um, he's being anyone but Jamie Fraser, and I think that's all I can really say. So it's about his journey back to being Jamie Fraser. Um, and so when we do see him, you know, when they are reunited and he is a printer, um, he's become this, this person with a new life and a new, uh, new relationships and new surroundings. And then his past comes back to, to haunt him. <laughs> <laughs> Fair to enough. save him. I'm going to be in so much trouble. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it's there in the books. And also um, in our writing, we've got great, great uh, writers um, this season, and, and the episodes are really strong. We can't wait. Yes. Hi. Hello. My name's Kathy, and I'm from Seattle. And last summer, at the last minute, <coughs> excuse me, I hopped on a plane so I could fly over and see all the guys at the Highlander convention. Wow. And um, the thing that I talked to Sam about at that time, I don't I'm sure you don't remember, but I mentioned the, the fact that you tweet so much with your gals on my tweet challenge and how inspiring that is, and I think that was a great example right there. And so, but my last question I asked you when I was there was, when are you coming to Seattle? And you came, so I'm so glad. <laughs> so it's all because of me, I'm sure. But um, what, what I wanted to know is, um, have you, either one of you had any chances to see Seattle as much, or what did, what's the thing you really want to do while you're here? Well, he wants to go to a bar or a pub. <laughs> uh, no, I, I went. I went last night to, to the um, Pike's place and uh, had a wander around, and it's it was uh, pouring down and cold, uh, and I and I thought, well, we're we're uh, not far from Scotland here. But no, it's um it's a great place. I wish I could stay longer. I'm a bit of a Hawks fan. Uh, Sherman being my my favourite. I, I don't know, I've been here many times, I only got in last night, so I'm not going to see much on this trip, but I, I, it's, it, have I been to, I think, Soquami Falls, is that one place I've been to, which is beautiful, yeah. um, obviously Pike Market, Pike Place, Pike Place, <laughs> um, but no, I love Seattle, it's, it's 
great. Seattle's a great, a great city, but this trip is really for you guys about interacting. Meeting you guys, yeah. so that's what we're looking forward to. Yeah. At this convention. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Frances. I'm from Covington via Calgary, Alberta. Hi, Frances. Um, Diana's writing is so evocative, and what I'm wondering is, she always lets us know that plaids are enough to keep you warm. <laughs> And or two when, people warm. And when we, and when we see you um, behind the scenes, you all have jackets on. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm wondering, do plaids really keep you warm? <laughs> That's an alternative fact, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right there. That's interesting. Thank you. That was a borderline bingo card question, I think. But we'll take it. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good. Okay, you guys are my Jeremy and Faye, so give me a minute. But I'm Barb. I'm from Enumclaw, Washington. Hi, Barb. Hi. Hi. Oh my God. You, said, you said hi to me. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> we have our own Monroe in Enumclaw, and I invite you to come and, and climb it. It's called Mount Peak. It's okay, accepted. Okay, awesome. Let me know when you're coming. I will. I'll be your bodyguard. <laughs> My question is, and I know you guys can't answer this for me, but if you could maybe give me some facial expressions or... You want spoilers, body don't you? Body language, how verbatim to the books is the print shop scene? <laughs> Are you satisfied? This is fun game, yes. let's do this. Good. Maybe we should just answer all our questions with facial expressions. Yeah, it's, it'll be like a liturgical panel. No words. Just, then we know. can't get in trouble. That's right. Nobody can say you said it. Yes. Hi. Hello. My name is Cindy. I'm from Iowa. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Hello. Sam, I was wondering, would you ever lend your voice to any navigational system? <laughs> oh. Because... I've There's seen few, how he drives. You do not want here. him leading you in a car. You know, there's a few yeah, thousand it, people here that will follow you anywhere. I, uh, I love it. I wouldn't take any directions from me. I think you might find yourself uh, in the uh, local river. Um, so yes. I, I think you guys all need to tweet Google Maps and Surrey and make this, yes. make this happen. Yes, have. I Has anyone got have. one of those Alexa things? Or the, the yeah, but yeah. I shouldn't say there Highlander, are other products available. I don't trust them. <laughs> I don't trust them. But I would lend my voice to that. All right, if anyone, if anyone can make that happen, it's this fan base, so it's really up to you guys. Thank you. All right, hi, how are you? Hi, my name is Tammy. I'm from North Carolina, actually about 30 minutes from Fraser's Ridge. Oh, wow. Hi. Hey. I'm a newcomer to Outlander. My pastor actually started our cult at our church. <laughs> He's in love with Claire, and we're in love with Jamie, of course. And my question is, any hope of filming coming to North Carolina? Any hope of coming to North They don't know. <laughs> the reality is, they're, we're lucky to have them here because of their filming schedule, so. Yeah, we'll just enjoy this weekend and, and see what plans out, right? Yes, is there a North Carolina in South Africa? I don't know. I should be. They don't know? Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Ginger. I'm from Seattle. Hi, Ginger. Ginger, like your outfit. Thank your you. I made it. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, uh, my question was, well, first off, I just wanted to say that I'm also geeking out that Claire is hosting because I'm a huge Buffy fan as well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so I went to Scotland in November and had a really creepy experience when I went to the West Kirk where my friend and I are pretty sure we saw a ghost. So I was just wondering what the creepiest thing is that's happened to you in Scotland because there seem to be a lot of ghosts in Scotland. All right. Tell us about your paranormal experiences in Scotland or elsewhere, if Ooh. you've had any. Um. I haven't had one in Scotland. I had one in Japan. Tell, do tell. I, um, I had a ghost in my room. <laughs> I did. Uh -huh. And we need a little more detail. After the 
I was living there when I was like 19 and um, there was some thing in my room. The TV would go on and off, phone would ring, I could feel oh something God. around and one night I felt this. <laughs> and it scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> so I moved out the next day. Sounds like a movie. <laughs> it, well, yeah, it could. I, I had uh, a member of my family uh, bought me many years ago. I used to play the trombone. <laughs> and uh, bought me a <laughs> wind-up metronome that keeps time. And it was sitting on my uh, mantelpiece <laughs> uh, for, <laughs> for some time. There's so many dust. jokes I could There's make so right many. now. Just, I'm just going to keep moving forward with this. And um, it had been there for many years. Anyway, um, I remember my family uh, unfortunately passed away. And that night, I was falling asleep thinking about this person. And the door was closed, the window was closed. And then it started ticking. And it hadn't moved for years. And it just started moving on its own. I thought that's pretty cool and a sign. <laughs> How have I never known that I you used it. to play the trombone? <laughs> <laughs> I know this is like a new little nugget. I should of have brought it with me. In fact, does anyone have one? I mean, I mean oh uh, my god. Yep. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And you look great, by the way. What do you play? <laughs> you know. Hi. Yeah. Hi, my name is Carrie, and I'm from uh, Auburn, Washington. Hi, Carrie. And I have one of the idiots out here that I've read the books, all of them including the little side ones, seven times. Wow. wow. Okay. And I guess the reason that I've always loved the books is because I can relate to the separation between in the year's time. I met my husband when I was 15, and we were separated from each other until I was 33. We had been married for 25 years. Woo -woo. Yeah. And we've raised his kids and my daughter, and... Yeah, I know what that feels like to be away from someone and love them so much, not know where they are, not know what they're doing, and I know what it feels like. And what I wanted to say to you guys is not really a question, but it's to say thank you for taking on these hard, iconic roles that are so important to so many people. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for sharing that. That's, that's an incredibly inspiring story. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi, I'm Kate, and I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Hi, Kate. And um, myself and a lot of the people I traveled with today are fans in equal sorry, measure um, of not only your performances on the show, but of your willingness to be um, politically outspoken, activists, um, and a advocates. <laughs> Um, and your charitable work as well. So I'm wondering what sort of planted the seed for that for you, uh, for that aspect of your work, which has dovetailed um, so strongly with the fandom, and what are you excited about this year with um, World Child Cancer and My Cute Challenge? That's a great question. Well, I think that's how my parents raised me. You know, I think that they raised me to be a citizen of the world and to be politically conscious and, and to look out for anyone who's less fortunate and, and to sort of fight for justice in, in whatever form. And so that's, that's just part of who I am. Um, I'm, you know, I'm really excited. Uh, World Child Cancer continues to grow. I think we're gonna do, I think, another t-shirt campaign soon. So um, yeah, I, it just, it's, it's such a great, Thing that I've, I've been able to be a part of and I'm really proud of the work that they do everywhere so yeah and I also think uh, honestly it's you guys uh, you know when we joined the show very quickly you were um, willing to get behind us and everything we say and it was just uh, you know a great opportunity for us to then lend our voice and, and your voice to, to causes that we believe in so thank you yeah, thank you so much <laughs> thank you hi Hi, I'm Noam. Um, I'm 17 years old, but I've already read all eight books, and I've seen Woo. the show. When did you start? Uh, <laughs> June, last June. Um, so You read quick. Yeah. Um, you know, out here, there are people of all ages, all genders, from all over the United States, and even from Canada. So how does it make you feel knowing that you've reached and impacted 
such a huge and diverse fan base? Well, I think we just have to thank Diana for that. Yes, you know, um, <laughs> it's uh, we we were just fortunate enough to step into this incredible world that she created, and you know, I lived in the U.S. for 13 years. Um, I would love to think I'm going to come back and live here again, and so I think we feel part of this global <laughs> fandom Our very much family. as well. It's yes. cool. So. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so let's rewind for just a minute because, you know, when you first got approached about auditioning for the role, and, and did you even know about the series of books? Did you know anything about Outlander? No, I, I, um, I got sent, I was living in LA, I got sent this two scenes and about three lines um, that were nurse from the 40s, <laughs> strong, confident, and uh, beautiful, or something like that, I don't know. Um, but it was, it was, I had no idea, and uh, I had a friend who's Irish, who had a friend who was working in the costume department, and um, she was like, oh, it's this massive series of books, like you have to go check it out. So I went to my local bookstore, Book Soup in LA, which is amazing. And when I was buying the book, he was like, oh, you know, they're making a TV show out of that. And I was like, oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And he was like, yeah, I wrote my thesis on Ron D. Moore. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> so, Can I take a look at that thesis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was, a good, it was a good little omen. Yes. What about you, Sam? Uh, yeah, like, similarly, I actually hadn't uh, heard of the books. Um, you know, obviously living in a bubble in, in the UK. But, um, you know, I Googled it and realized it was this fast world and went out and did the same. And I think everyone else in London at the time had been buying the books because um, the first one, Cross Stitch, as it's called in, in the UK, uh, was totally sold out. So I had to go to several places to try and find it. Um, and then, yeah, it was this roller coaster of, of meetings. We had uh, Skype um, calls with uh, Ira Bear and, and Meryl Davis and, um, and Ron as well. And uh, yeah, very quickly we went into to, to auditions and tests. And it was, um, yeah, not look back. It's been amazing. That's amazing. Hi. Hi, I'm Debbie from Pittsburgh, and that's Hi, the headquarters of H.J. Hines. I've given you both pickle pins from Pittsburgh. Yes. Yes. I've, yins are great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, this kind of dovetails on the question you just answered. I think fans would really love it if we could hear you read a little bit of the book. So I brought a little section oh. of something. <laughs> that we did not see in the series. It's when Jamie gives Claire his, the wedding ring. You know what, that is so sweet. Unfortunately, we don't have time for that. I'm sorry, I'm, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that is such a, such a kind gesture, and maybe it's a suggestion for the next con they're at. Maybe we could arrange that beforehand. I think maybe, we should try. Maybe Sam and I can maybe do that as a little gift to fans yeah, on our own time. That. How about yes, that? Yes. That'd be nice. If you want to leave, if you want to uh, leave the the what you have selected, and we'll take we'll it backstage, that. and maybe yeah. we'll be able I, I to put that out on a Claire video or something. I could be Claire, she could be Jamie. If that's <laughs> <laughs> you know, Thank it's a you. long drought, Lander. Maybe maybe that can be something that'll tie over for yeah, a bit. It's a good right? tide over. Hey, give her a round of applause. That's a great idea. Great idea. All right. Hi. Hello. I'm Heather Watson. I'm having an outer body experience. <laughs> Come back to Earth. You're, You're here. Too. You're here. <laughs> and before I ask my question, I think every woman here would love to say, on your feet, soldier. <laughs> you don't have to, of course, but I would, I can't go to the grave without saying that, being here in front of you. But uh, my question is for both of you. And I'm wondering if there's a scene in um, either of the first two books, because we can't talk about the third, that you wish you got to act out in this series. Is there a scene that maybe was omitted that you wish you could have uh, portrayed on screen? Yes. It's a great question. It's such a good question. And I, there is so many, and I'm just. What no. about what mm. about you? What I have, um, like, the, um, oh, my goodness. Hi, Sam and Katrina. Hi. <laughs> my husband that scene. My twin. That's the scene was missing. <laughs> I'm literally um. taking care of the children's day, so I'm like, oh, my God. 
Does anyone have a scene that I they wish was there? I do the, um... Loch Ness Monster? The, um, yeah, no, we don't want to see that. When you come together before you go to the boat in France in the, um, in the steaming pool and really oh, come yeah, together. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's... I think that's so um, wonderful. After, when, when she takes you back to the Abbey and they have that scene in the, oh, in the, in pool. the pool. Yes. That would have been very cool. Um, I don't know how we would have filmed that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I also, I mean, there's, there's certain things that just, you, you know, it's such an amazing thing to read, but you can't do it in, in reality. You know, the, the wolf scene, I would yeah. have loved to have done. And that was, that was actually was in the scripts originally. No, it? well, you see, we, first of all, we nearly killed an actor with some dogs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, um, with Father Bane, uh, we tried to do a scene where he gets attacked by dogs, but he actually got attacked by dogs. So <laughs> I think at that point they were like, we're nixing the wolf. Yeah, so. We should have done the wolf. I think that would have been kind of fun. I like that you guys all laughed when she said that. I know. <laughs> it was quite horrific. I'd like to see you fight a wolf. I, you know, I think I could I think take down a wolf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Great question. Hi. Hi, my name is Cindy Davis, and I'm from Frisco, Texas, near Dallas, and I'm here with my friend hey. Stacy, who wasn't brave enough to come forward. But um, you guys do an amazing job. It's just, it's crazy to read a book and then see you come to life, and it's, it's awesome. But you're actors, and you have lives, and you have to travel a lot. We get that. But how do you juggle living in different countries for different amounts of time? I'm sure you don't go back to L.A. every day or every week. I mean, you're living in South Africa. You're going to be in Scotland for however many months, and you just plan your life accordingly. I guess you just rent spaces. I mean, how do you do that as an actor? And you don't know where you're going to be tomorrow, and how do you have a life? <laughs> Lots of caffeine. Lots of caffeine. <laughs> I have massive suitcases. Um, how many did you bring this time? Oh, no, right now I'm just rolling with two. two but I'm picking two. up some in London to bring yeah. to South Africa. Um, you know, it is, it is one of the challenges of being an actor, um, you know, but I think we all know going into this career that you're going to be a bit of a vagabond, and I think that, you know, somewhere in our hearts, that's who we are. <laughs> you know, I think we, years ago, we, we may have been slight gypsies, um, uh, but, you know, I think that that's, that's kind of exciting about our lives. I love traveling. I love seeing different cities and people and the cultures and what makes us unique and what makes us the same. I, you know, that's something that really fuels me. Um, but yeah, if there's challenges with it too. You know, seeing friends and family and all of those things is, is difficult sometimes. But hey, FaceTime and Skype, it's changed my life, so. There was a time, uh, you obviously, uh, Katrina was nominated for a Golden Globe in the recent Golden Globes. <laughs> And uh, I believe you went to the Globes and you flew back the next day or that evening and went straight back to work uh, the, next, the next morning. And so if there's a couple of scenes where I look a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. And I would think all the traveling feeds, you know, it's more experiences to feed you as an actor as well. Yeah. You know, different You got to You got to live to tell a story. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Thank you. Yes, hi. Hi. I'm Paula from Vancouver, Canada. And hi, Paula. Uh, hi. Um, I was pretty excited, and I want to make sure I had a good question, so I actually got two questions in case somebody stole mine. So I'm going to ask you guys, serious question or funny question? Oh. Mm, funny. 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 Okay, good choice. <laughs> all right, so there's lots of Scottish slang in Outlander. We all love it. Um, I'm not going to attempt any of it. My favorite is what you call a 69. I can't remember what it is now. Anyone? What do we call a 69? Oh, okay, sorry, in French. But there's some good Scottish slang in there. So what are your two favorite Scottish slangs? Bohid. <laughs> <laughs> Bohid is good. Bohid's good. Um, uh, well, your balls are your... Yeah, a, bo a bohid is a... balls. It, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Sam? And, uh, yes. And close to your balls is your... Bobby, right? Yeah, yeah Bobby. <laughs> yeah. Which was, I, I, I was told that one recently. <laughs> How did we get on this topic? Wow. Thanks a lot. Good question. <laughs> you fan. Thank you, though. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. We're going to go over here. 
sweating now. From Ooh. Seattle, Gia Gwit. Um, for both of you, what is the most difficult or challenging episode you've done thus far? We'd have to say out of season one or two, difficult in filming, right? Right. Uh, season one or two. Actually, I haven't said so three's been pretty tough, um, but I can't okay. say that, obviously. But you can't say why, so. Um, two or one. The end. Yeah, one was pretty, pretty tough. Um, God, there's just, they, they always have their own challenges, don't they? I mean, yeah. you know, whether it's like shooting on a, on, on a hilltop and it's, it's pouring with rain, like the uh, picnic scene, um, or, you know, or the intimate scenes between us as well. You know, they always have their own particular challenges. Um, so I can't think of a particular yeah. one. I mean, I mean, I think emotionally, uh, one of the toughest was Faith, um, <laughs> which, It was so beautifully written by Tony Graffia. Um, she just, it has such a poetic sense to her writing and, and it was so beautiful, but you know, it's a, it's, it's a responsibility. You know that this is a very important app for your character, for the fans, for, for the story. And you know, it's a lot riding on your shoulders because a lot of that is just personal. You know, it's great when Sam and I have fight scenes or emotional scenes, he, you know, we, we feed off each other in those scenes, and it's always great because, <laughs> you know, I, I know how to push his buttons, I think, in a scene, and, and vice I'll versa. Push back. And literally, actually. Yes. We had a scene this season, which is not, it's not really a spoiler, but uh, we were rehearsing, and I gave him a little push, <laughs> and Sam just went boom, and I flew across the room, landed on my butt, and I I couldn't walk for about four days properly. <laughs> oh, see, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Anything? Yeah, trying to fight with a He-Man is challenging. Those, yeah. those are always the great scenes, though. We really enjoy them, don't we? Just taking chunks yeah. out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing things at each other. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're good. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi. Hi. My name is Rachel, and I'm from Annapolis, Maryland. Hi, Hi, Rachel. And I'm representing 266 peakers in our Chesapeake Earth Group. Wow. 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 Hello to all 266. Yes. So, um, first of all, Katrina, your support of what this country is going through politically is so fantastic, and I can't thank you enough. <laughs> to know that people in other countries are feeling our pain sort of helps us have the fight. Anyway, so this is my question. It's a very serious question, and it's a personal question. I asked Diana this question at Random House, and she cried. So please do not cry. I can't take that again. <laughs> and I also asked it of the Highlanders at Star Fury, but Stephen Cree was there with you, Sam, and- I apologize for I everything <laughs> Steve <laughs> has said or will right. say. So here's my question. Um, you're acting, and you're, um, your embodiment of these characters has profoundly, and I don't use that word lightly, profoundly changed my life. It, I mean, it brought me out of terrible depression. And I know it's done that for millions of other people. So my question to both of you is, as a performance actor, an artist, an artist how does that affect you, that you have profoundly changed and altered the course of people's lives? Don't cry. Please don't cry. <laughs> That's very kind of you to say. Um, I think we just try and do the best job we can, don't we? And uh, we really appreciate that, that you connect with what we do, and we're very fortunate to be in this situation, I think. I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's very humbling. You know, we're actors. What, you know, we make believe for a living, but if, you know, uh, anything that we do can give people an escape, that's, that's a huge bonus for us you know it's it, it it's it makes us feel very humble and I then think. and then you get people like Stephen Cree and, and then you get people <laughs> like Stephen yeah. Cree and isn't that really the epitome of what it means to be an artist to be able to affect someone on such a personal level thank you for sharing that yeah, that's thank really you so much amazing thank you. thank you hi so we have 
time for one more question on this side and that side. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Thank you for holding the microphones, oh, both of you, <laughs> and for your ears. Hi, um, my name is Jacinta, and I'm from Charleston, South Carolina, but I live Hi, in Jacinta. Seattle. It's cold. Um, I loved the costumes this season, especially the brown dress when you were walking in the Versailles Garden. So, um, considering your background as a model, do you ever get um, input into any of the costumes? I remember uh, Claire saying that she helped design the red dress, which I tried to sew, but didn't work. <laughs> and uh, I'm just wondering if you have any input in your costumes at all. Um, you know, Terry is an artist, so I don't think anything that uh, I would be bringing to her would add to it. But, she, you know, Terry, we have a conversation always about things. And, you know, I, I definitely, at this point, I think we both are on the same page about who we think Claire is and, and the kind of woman that she is and the kind of clothes that she would wear. And, you know, that's, that's definitely an important part of you know, my portrayal of the character is to also feel like this is the woman that I'm playing, that, you know, the internal life is matched by the external life as well. Um, so, yeah, we, we definitely have conversations, but I, I definitely uh, will bow to the master <laughs> when, when needed to be. And you look great, by the way. Yes, yes that's beautiful. Did you make that? Did you design that? I did just for the picture of the stamp. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. You did a good job, girl. I can't wait. It's awesome. Yes. Thank you. Hi. 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 Oh, I'm freaking out, but I'll be fine. My name is Amelia Batsis, and I'm here from Chicago. And uh, I was not as prepared as some of the others. I had two questions, both of which have been asked. So instead, Sam, um, I'm going to make a request. Yes. My mom could not come. Can you look at this camera and give her a shout out? Her name's Angeline. Angela. Angeline. Angeline. Yes. Hello, Angeline from Emerald City Comic Con. We wish you could be here and you're not. Um, and all these fabulous people as well. So, uh, <laughs> next thing. <laughs> all right. I'm going to make the executive decision to do one more from each uh, side as yeah. long as you guys could be fast. Yeah, because I, I, I wish we could take everyone's question, but let's just see what we can get through. Go ahead. Thank you so much for taking me. I appreciate it. My name is Megan. I'm from San Diego, California. And hey, Megan. Uh, Hi, Megan. First of all, thank you so much for all you do. We really appreciate it as a fan, and thank you for your charity work. It's, it's beautiful to like, follow you on Twitter and see all the things that you guys represent thank and you. do. Um, Sam, this is for you. What does it mean to you, being from Scotland, the, the movies and the TV show, or I mean, sorry, the books and the TV show portray it so magnificently, and has it had an impact on Scotland and tourism and all of that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, this show has been great for Scotland, and there are actually a lot of shows. Uh, Avengers is currently shooting in, in Scotland, uh, which is pretty cool, and actually our drivers are, uh, are working on that, I believe. Will I get told off for saying that as well? <laughs> Probably. Oh, God. And, um, yeah, so uh, it's been great for Scotland, and, um, you know, long may it continue. You know, we, we've built this great studio, and we've got, we're employing lots of craftsmen and people, and people being trained up. Um, so this show has actually not only, you know, done great things for Scottish tourism, but also for the, for the industry uh, in Scotland. So, yeah, we're very thankful for it. Thank you. Great question. I have one more part. I'm going to Scotland this summer. What are your... Favorite places to go for a scotch? Oh, favorite places for what? For scotch. For scotch. Ooh. Um, ooh. Uh, Where is your favorite place for scotch? I like Glenlivet. Oh, yes, Glenlivet's nice. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Enjoy your trip. Thank you. Enjoy. Okay, let's go over here real quick. Hi, I'm Eva from Seattle, and my mom from Nashville introduced me to the books and drug me here and let me know in no uncertain terms she's taking the couch for the weekend to be here, so thank you for coming. <laughs> um, I do have a question, though. Since you've got this huge anthology of books to draw on from your character and with the series following the book so closely and with the author working so closely, as an artist, how do you feel like you've been able to put input of the character with your creative input in the show? That's a great question. Um, well, I, I think, again, it goes back to that thing of, uh, you know, everything that we do filters through our own experience. So, yes, the books are, you know, this 
amazing blueprint and there's so much of Claire's inner thoughts and emotional life in the book, but the way that I interpret that is my stamp that I put on it. So, um, you know, everyone reading a book will read it in a different way. So I think that's, that's kind of how I do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys, this time oh it's for real. Did you guys have a good time this hour? Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you guys get on your feet and give one more huge round of applause for Katrina Bolt and Sam Huen. Thank you so much. You can much. see them downstairs today and tomorrow, so make sure you take the journey down there. Have a great Comic Con. See you guys. Oh, wow. For honor, for the watch. Witness the finest in melee.